Okay, hi guys, this is Kat here with transmission number 24 for Soul Spirit Elite. You are going to hear all of the wonderful creatures I coexist with in the background. My apologies in, uh, in advance if the dogs start barking like crazy. Um, there are finches back there, so brace yourselves. <laughs> uh, today's message is all about what we kind of sp spoke to in our first group meeting, which is the protective measures that should be in place when we are doing or starting or continuing to do our self-evolution, particularly in our cases, our shadow work. So what's some armor that we have to use in order to um, safely and successfully get through our shadow work? This is a not all inclusive. There are certainly many other uh, tactics and practices to use besides what we're going to touch on today but these were the things that uh, really came through and are excellent things to focus on if you have other ideas other questions about other practices please leave a, a comment down below or email me or write it down so we can talk about it at our next next group meeting uh, but here we go so the first and most important protection that you can have up uh, for your shadow work is having a sense of your centeredness within yourself with a strong aura. And the centeredness should really come from your heart space as opposed to anywhere else. Uh, having that self-love and compassion during the time that you are looking at the you know the dark stuff the shadow aspects of yourself of your lineage of experiences that you've had if you're going into those uh, evaluations with a critical mind with a judging mind with a fear-based mind you are going to self-destruct uh, you are going to have denial. You are going to not be able to look at the truth of what the shadows actually are there for, which is for us to shed the light on them, to actually see them for what they are, to heal them, to address them in a compassionate way. Um, so having that heart space centeredness, being strong from your core in knowing that okay well whatever comes up is i'm here to love it to transform it to to brush away all of the fear and the shame and the negative uh thoughts i might have about these things so i can really look at it from a loving perspective to take the power of it away in a way and to transform it to something that is actually powerful which is the lesson that it's there to teach you um Methods for dispelling that fear, transforming that fear or that self-hate that can come up when we're doing this kind of work is to have a mantra in place already. And we, we're going to talk about that more during our group meeting uh, is to have a connection to, to the divine, to your angels, to your spirit guides, to the one and almighty divine whoever uh, you'd like to pray to for that strength for that compassion for seeing the bigger picture and to be able to you know weather through the shadow work uh, laughing is an excellent way to transform or dispel fear and self-judgment no you know being able to take things a little bit on the lighter side and that's not to um disown any part of how profound or deep or uh, impactful this element is that you're looking at but it's to help transform it to help take away some of again that power of of the shadow forces being able to bring us into this this space of self-hate uh, smallness feeling like you're being overpowered by forces that that are taking over um, these things can be shifted in an instant with laughing, with clapping, with any other noise. If you have um, instruments that you like to use to bring a new frequency into the picture, if you if you are able to tonalize or just make noises, oming, 
anything to change the vibration of the space that that you're in as you're going through this or to really anchor you in a higher vibration while you're going through the shadow aspects is an excellent way to help dispel or transform uh, the fear that can then that can come up during the shadow work the the difficult aspects of really looking at the darkness uh, in a new perspective and again to be in that heart-centered space if you start feeling the fear closing in on you if you start feeling the panic closing in on you if you start feeling um like you're dissociating or or trying to run away from whatever is coming up to just do what the care bears do and beam out from your core just rainbows and rainbows of love shedding all of the the negative aspects or emotional responses and just going back to that centeredness of love it can really help shift things in a very important way give you your power back let you have that uh, more anchored in grounded viewpoint but from a higher perspective at the same time where where you are not going to be compromised by looking at the all of the elements where you have the faith and the power to explore these dark corners and crevices that you might want to overlook otherwise so that that's the first method is that having that heart centeredness um and and being strong within yourself um strong aura that i mentioned as well this can, your aura can be reinforced by doing your regular cleansing practices, your regular uh, movement practices, uh, your salt baths are excellent ways to clear the aura, but in order to really strengthen it, that does take meditation, that does take visualizing, that does take checking in with your outer boundaries and seeing where you're compromised, where are there holes in your aura, where are other people attached to your aura, other, not even just people, institutions, ways of thinking, paradigms, what's affecting your aura, what's really shifting or shaping the energies that you hold around you. When you have a strong aura, these outside forces cannot penetrate you in that way you have a lot more space within yourself to um to visit these other places of consciousness to visit the dark shadows and alleyways and have this strong sense of self where you're not going to look at one of these new truths and start questioning your entire existence over it it's going to be more of an integration practice uh, because your boundaries are, are strong in who you are already and that's how that's the strong aura so uh, it is again still a practice of self-love but there is a lot of uh, conscious effort that goes into maintaining the integrity of your aura and that's another thing that we'll go into more depth and exploration with uh, during our next group meeting physical tools that we can use to do these things to help strengthen our aura to help keep us in our heart center to help ward off any of the negative uh, thinking or self-doubt or fear that can come around when we're doing this uh, shadow work different stones and and jewels semi precious jewels uh, we already know we've talked about how different stones you can program the crystalline structure of a rock you find outside of a crystal you get at the crystal shop um, or you mine for these minerals have different vibrations and these vibrations to an extent are working in and of themselves but you can enhance them by setting intentions with them by working with them forming relationships with them uh, and different kinds of stones different kinds of minerals are known to do different types of work for protection or enhancement of your energies and uh, for example certain stones are more so protecting you in that they absorb all the negativity away from you so it doesn't stick to you other stones can completely deflect or reflect uh, any negative forces that are trying to penetrate so they don't make it to you at all other stones what they do is they transform it entirely and take that negativity and process it and bring it to a higher vibration for you so 
any stone can be programmed to do any of those things um, but again each stone has a natural inclination towards some of those qualities or a few of them uh, and that just takes getting to know the different stones a few that are popping into my mind uh, shungite uh, black tourmaline rose quartz clear quartz citrine especially citrine uh, selenite We've spoken about a few of those already. Um, Jasper, Tiger's Eye. Uh, let's see, anything else that wants to come through right now? Selenite just keeps on coming through. That's a major transformative stone that will take low vibrations and really clear them and, and uplift them. Um, and with any of the uh, darker stones especially, those tend to attract the negativity towards them like a magnet kind of soaks them up for you and those need to be cleansed more often because they are containers for that negativity for you and certainly they can fill up just like a, you know a sponge would soak up only a certain amount of water and then start dripping it out and leaking things everywhere same thing happens with these stones if you're not maintaining them uh, so be aware of that any sort of tallyman for that matter it does not have to be a stone it can be a little trinket that your grandmother gave you when you were a kid it could be a uh, feather it can be uh, really anything that you have a special connection to where you feel that force that magic or you and in, you infused it with that force or magic to protect you so you can choose a hairband even that you wear all of the time um, or a sock that you your favorite pair of socks you can charge those things you can make them into your lucky socks you can make them into your protective socks you can use that scrunchie and say okay whenever this is around my wrist or whenever I put it in my hair it's doing its job to dispel any negative forces that are trying to you know compromise my my highest forms uh, however you'd like to anchor in those elements of protection uh, altar space is another way that you can maintain protection for yourself you don't have to be carrying your altar around for you for it to do its work uh, but with any altar you do need to tend to it regularly so like a daily ritual of visiting your your altar space for five minutes every day and thanking it for the protection work it's doing if that's what you have you know programmed it to be working on for you uh, is very important but highly effective altar space can definitely protect you transform things for you uh, keep an eye out on things for you and then you can check in with your altar space and and you know not only thank it but ask it like okay how'd you do today what happened did anything um occur that should come to my attention where you did was there anything that you actually protected me from transformed anything worth it, uh, me needing to address any further uh, altar space is a is an active uh almost being when once you create it an active vibration working for you and so you can form a relationship with it just the same way that you can form relationships with your stones with your talisman um clean space is really important as well for protection you don't want to have a lot of clutter around you don't want to have clutter in your space you don't want to have clutter in your body you don't want to have clutter in your mind all of those things are distractions from having healthy boundaries from having healthy mind space from having a uh, clean protected outer manifestation of your inner being so if you're letting things linger and fester or build up in your space around you you better bet that that's also happening inside you psychically energetically and most likely also biologically from like a functional medicine standpoint you could be accumulating different toxins um, physically speaking and it is manifesting as clutter outside of you but as within so without if you start cleaning that stuff outside of you your body is going to get that same message within as well and vice versa so um, if you're noticing things about your space that you don't like shift it with love and know that you're shifting not just that external thing but like it's a representation of so much more that's within you uh, so if you feel safe and clean and protected in your environment in your outer space you are also doing that work 
for your body, for your energy, for your inner self. Uh, super important for protection and armor for this shadow work is to have the right support system in place. It is so important to have people and beings that you can go to, that you can call upon at any point if you're struggling, if you need guidance, if you need you know, outside reinforcement or validation. Uh, we're here for you as a group. Soul Spirit Elite is that space, is that container. But it's so important to also have that in, in your private relationships and your personal intimate relationships. Do you have friends that you can be raw with, that you can go to? Do you have family members who honestly understand you know who you are and can hold this type of space even when it's uncomfortable for you even when you are feeling um a little ungrounded or un un i want to say unhinged but like as you're as you untangle some of the knots that are in your energies that are that's in your past these shadow things that we have to kind of follow these little strings through and then when we find the kinks in in the flow we need to sit there and we need to unravel it so as we're unraveling uh, we need to feel safe and and we need people around us who are going to help us know what side is up what side is left right keep us oriented you know keep us grounded and oriented while we're going through this unraveling process um, so yes, this group, please, by all means, continue or start to use this space in that way, but also start asking yourself, do I have those safe relationships in my life? Do I, have I created that, uh, safe space with other people anywhere? Uh, and if you don't yet have that, well, let's go into why that might be. Is it a self-protection measure that you did that? Um, self-preservation is it fear of being judged is it judgment coming from you or from something that happened to you in the past that made you not be able to trust anymore going to people in this way uh, that's a whole nother aspect of more shadow work is what we're getting into there um, but having that support system in place is so important and if you don't have that support system in place to take start taking the steps to create that for yourself uh, is very important if you'd like to really make the most out of going through this this cleansing clearing process that we are that we're working on here and the last thing to kind of keep in mind like you know zipping up this coat that we talked about in the metaphor of doing the shadow work during our, our group meeting um, what's that last step is to remember that what's good and what's bad is so very often more of an illusion than an ultimate truth. It's important not to judge, not to have judgment, but it's also important to have good discernment. Discernment for am I spending my energy and time on the right things? Am I really looking at the true shadows or am I distracting myself? From, from what I really need to be looking at. Am I too scared to look at the truth of the matter? Am I lying to myself or others? Am I hiding from myself or others? This all takes a lot of discernment to be able to have that self discernment in knowing your boundaries, knowing, you know, as well, like, okay, well, this stuff is too heavy for me to continue to explore on my own right now. Not only do I need to talk to the group about this and get a little bit more understanding of what's going on, but maybe I need to also bring a therapist on board or a life coach, or maybe I do need to finally have that conversation with my mom that I've been putting off. There's, there's a level of knowing how to pace yourself, being true to yourself, um, which is called discernment, which is an inner knowing. Uh, but not an inner judging, not, oh, I'm bad for this thing that I did that I'm finally looking at, or I'm, I'm bad for not wanting to look at this thing, not being ready to go down that, that road of self-awareness. There is no good and bad in that way. It's, it's what you're ready for and, and 
and how loving you can be during that process to allow yourself the proper pace, uh, the proper frequency, you know, shadow work is not for the light hearted, but it doesn't mean that you have to be a banshee warrior going through everything all at once either. You can pace yourself. It's important to know when to stop. It's important to know when to continue. Um, and that, again, that comes from having that strong heart-centeredness. It's self-compassion. It's self-love. So that just brings us right back to that number one first armor that we have, which is coming from the heart space, the, the deep core heart space that we all have and that we're all cultivating uh, more and more every day. So that is our message for this week. Um, our, neck, our group meeting, I think we have already decided on. Let me just pull it up and make sure I have it in my calendar here. <laughs> yep, it's this Saturday, January 9th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I have sent that link out to our members already. I look forward to delving in to this message just a little bit more uh, during our group meeting. And we'll also be doing a really awesome uh, guided meditation to help us shed some of our older layers and energies to get us into a fresh new place and to start reinforcing that strong aura that we're talking about here. Sending so much love and light your way. Keep at it, beautiful creatures. We will talk soon.